Welcome to part two of the Beyond 20 Sharewell tutorial series on how to use Postman collaboration platform to create and test API integrations with Sharewell service management. In part one of the series, we demonstrated how to set up collections in Postman that can be reused for different integrations and how to set up variables that can be passed between API calls to emulate the calls to the REST API from the integrated system. In part two of the series, we will demonstrate how to troubleshoot API calls that either fail with specific error codes or do not produce the desired results. Perhaps the most common methods for Sharewell API integrations are Get Business Object and Save Business Object. The Save Business Object method can be used to create and edit business object records and requires a well-formatted JSON payload. In this video, we will use the Save Business Object method to create a new incident in Postman. In part one of the series, we created a collection for Sharewell demos, and we will use that collection to build our payload JSON for a new incident. Then we will post the payload using the Save Business Object method. We will purposely use JSON payloads that are either formatted incorrectly or have missing data fields or extra data fields to demonstrate the different error codes returned by Sharewell API and how to resolve those errors and also how a new incident will look when the JSON is not formatted properly but does not create an error. Our first call to Sharewell will be our login call to get a bearer token. Once we have the token we can make a call to get the business object summary for the incident object. This returns a JSON that includes a new variable called bizobID that we have stored to our collection variables you know, using our post uh, method test. And then next we're going to get our business object template for the incident using that bizobID. And the business object template includes the fields that we need. And when we run that, we have a test here that will set our JSON variable or our template variables, and then we'll go down and get our schema to tell us which fields we actually need out of that template. So we look at our console, and this tells us that we have uh, several fields here, and we had uh, 14, about 153 fields, but only 74 field names that we actually need. And then we narrowed that down using our JSON editor to just 16 fields. And then we needed to edit out, and, and in this case, we've added a couple of fields that are not in the instant. So we have summary, which is not in there. And we also had comments, cloned incident, and location. So these three fields don't belong. And when you send a JSON that has fields that don't exist in the business object, you will get back a, a value an invalid code called code 500 and if I go up here in my console and I look for my code 500 code 500 returned a response general failure error message is the object reference is not set to an instance of an object but that's incorrect because we had a proper uh, business object ID but what we had was a JSON payload that included fields that do not belong to that object so it throws an erroneous error but uh, we were able to figure this out. So our next attempt was we took out the fields that were not valid and we were able to get back a 200 error status or a 200 status code. And it gave us the new business object rec ID and public ID. So let's go look for that public ID right here in our Sharewell service management tool. And there we have it. It created it correctly. Has our description, our customer, call source, all of the different values that we included. So now let's take this same JSON and let's edit it a little bit so that we can uh, get a couple of different codes back. Uh, let's start with our service. Let's change service from printing with that spelled correctly to printing with two G's, it's not spelled correctly. Let's save that. 
We'll go down here into description so we can tell this is different. Let's call this test two. So we know that it is our second test. And we'll send it, let's see what we get back. And now we get a validation error. So let's look at the body of the validation. And it tells us that there is a value which is not valid. The value submit incident in field uh, incident subcategory is not valid. And the reason for that is because we have a service that doesn't exist. So the 500 internal error is very, very indescript, but the error message is usually very descriptive of what's going on. However, sometimes you do have to use a little bit of intuition to say, well, submit incident is correct for the subcategory. But when we go back and look at our JSON, and in this case, we happen to know what we did. We put in the incorrect spelling for the service. Service is not spelled with two G's. So if we take that G out, it'll work. So now let's look at it from a standpoint. Let's take the G out and let's go ahead and change our dra our status from new, which does exist, to draft. And I don't believe draft is a value that's valid, so let's go ahead and test that. And again, this time we get back the value draft in field incident status is not valid. So that is a correct non-erroneous error message. And we get back the error of 500. Another thing that will happen is, is that if you don't set the dirty property to true on an, on an item, it will not populate. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, set that back to new to create test two. And then we'll try it with a value that uh, is not set. So let's go ahead and put this back to new. And that's good. We got a 200 back. We got our public ID 2378. Everything's good there. Now this time we're going to send it with a malformatted JSON. So for test three, I'm just going to leave a comma out. So I left a comma out between the description field and the impact field. This should air out. And now we get a 400 bad request. So the 400 is very similar to 500. The biggest difference between the 400 and 500 is, notice we didn't get a body back here. So in Postman, we have, in addition to the body, we also have the console. So if we go down to the console, look for the 400 error here, and let's open that post up. Well, the first thing we could do is we could grab our request body, and we could paste it into our JSON editor. So let's do that. And let's just copy it out and then go over to JSON editor and then we'll paste it in here. And right off the bat, it sh shows us we have an error right here. And it says it expected a comma instead of a blank. So that's where the problem is. Line 38, we missed our comma again. We already knew that and that's what we expected. So if we put the comma back in to our payload, we should expect that this would work properly. So let's go ahead and try that. We put our comma back in. Voila, we have a 200. The next one we're going to put in is we're going to take a field that is not a required field. And we're going to so first of all, I'm going to go look and see which fields are not required. So it looks like owned by team is not required for save. So we can create our incident without the owned by team. So we're going to go in here to owned by team and we're going to set dirty to false. 
And remember, dirty comes as false in the schema and the template that we get. So if you don't set those to true, you should expect that it won't set it. So we'll go up here and so we can differentiate this. Let's just uh, change our description to test four. We'll save this. We'll go ahead and hit send. We get back 102.380. So let's look for that one. And it's not assigned to a team. Even though we sent the team, owned by a team, it didn't assign it because we did not set the dirty value to true. So let's review before we go. First of all, the descriptors of the error messages that you get back will be shown in the body. But if they're not, Postman has the collection where you can go and grab the actual uh, JSON payload that you sent and then copy that into our json editor online which will tell you uh, whether it's malformatted or not um, the other item that you need to look for in a uh, 500 code error is that it is not always exact so you have to use some intuition in our case we uh, had an invalid service the service didn't come back and say it was invalid it showed us that the subcategory was invalid even though it was because we sent the service to be the wrong value and then in another case when we sent a value that we didn't set the dirty attribute to true even though we set a value for that field it didn't send the value right here we set it to false the value was included in the json but the set to dirty was false so it did not include that value in the created record. I hope this video has been informative for you. Please subscribe to our Beyond 20 LLC channel on YouTube to view more videos on Sharewell, ITIL, and other ITSM solutions provided by Beyond 20, or visit our website at www.beyond20.com to learn how Beyond 20 can assist your company with ITSM training and consulting, as well as Sharewell development and administration. <laughs>